Welcome, I'm Rob Green. I work at AMD in the Pro EV Broadcast and Consumer Vertical Business Unit. And here we are at ISE 2025. I'll be delighted to give you a tour of all the demos that we've got on the booth today. Um, so we have multiple demos that are based on AMD, FPGA and adaptive SOC technology. Uh, the first demo that we have here is from uh, our partners Megapixel. Um, they have a Helios LED wall processor unit based on the Kintex Ultrascale FPGA. This is one of the uh, highest performance LED processing platforms available. It supports 100 gig Ethernet, 702110. Um, and the Megapixel uh, Helios processor is driving these new Ventana micro LED tiles. This uh, is really high performance, huh? Very high performance, yeah. So it does all the video processing, uh, all of the uh, Ethernet connectivity, uh, and huge bandwidths, lots of capability available. So uh, all the biggest setups with um, very big display, mic uh, LED displays, Yeah, most many of the in the world use this system. That's correct, yeah. Many of the LED walls that you see uh, are, are driven by FPGAs generally, uh, but Helios and Me uh, Megapixel are really driving the performance um, to very high levels. They it's also- It's been a partnership in long, over a long time? Yes, yeah, yeah, we've been long time. Uh, partners together um, and they do excellent stuff with our products. Uh, you can also see that they're driving the Ventana tiles which are very high quality, extremely thin um, and these are used in high-end residential, high-end commercial and retail applications. So uh, we're delighted to be working with them on our FPGAs. And what's the Arctix? Uh, so the Arctix is another FPGA. We have different families of FPGAs. So Kintex Ultrascale is in here. Arctix is in there, it's reprogrammable hardware, so you can really define what it is you want to support. Um, our next demo here is from uh, Blackmagic Design. Uh, Blackmagic have just launched the IP10 codec, which is a very tiny codec um, to enable lowest compress, uh, sorry, enough compression to get Ultra HD over 10 gig Ethernet. Is it in there? It's in here, it's in the camera, it's in a lot of Blackmagic products now. So if you see Blackmagic 2110 products, it will have this codec in there. So it can do 4K or 8K over Ethernet? It can do 4K, it can do a very low latency implementation. It's tiny, so it's negligible resource. Um, and the thing with Blackmagic is that they're very transparent about the codec. They actually give this away on their website. So you can download the code and implement this in our technology, make your uh, ecosystem uh, able to interface the Blackmagic products. There's many advantages of doing this stuff over 10 gig Ethernet. Um, well, I think you can choose. We, we have different protocols that work with 1 gig, 10 gig, even 100 gig and beyond. So th there's lots of different codecs that are capable of supporting different use cases. And you try not to take some quality away when you convert? No, this, this is actually visually lossless. So the, there's a lot of the mezzanine codecs or lightweight codecs like IP10, which will reduce the bandwidth, but you won't see it on the screen. All right. Uh, so if we go to the next demo, we can talk about IPMX maybe. So IPMX is the uh, new open, interoperable, scalable standard for AV over IP. It's based on the 702110 uh, protocols. Um, and this specification is, is very interesting for the AV industry because it can bridge the uh, convergence between broadcast and AV. So you can see here that we've got FPGAs, again the uh, Zinc Ultra Scale Plus family in this case is running uh, an IP core from our partners Adeus and NextEra Video um, and their IP is also used in products like the Plexus AV Gateway, uh, Matrox Boxes um, uh, as well as the uh, Village Island uh, IPMX Center. These are modules so they're showing that you can actually use a very small device uh, and cost-effective device to still implement IPMX uh, in your product. So you don't need to go very expensive to get the capability of the IP. And what do you show here? So this is the switch. So the Matrox Conduct IP is selecting the inputs and outputs for all of these and you can switch between this kind of virtual switching uh, capability based on the NMOS standard. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of demos here that are from AMD. So we, we're also showcasing the fact that we have the basic building blocks uh, for video processing pipelines. So last year we launched the world's first DisplayPort 2.1 implementation on our FPGAs. Um, and sorry, the first FPGA implementation, I should clarify. 
Um, so this is showcasing UHBR20. This is full DisplayPort 2.1 rate. We're actually showcasing here a 4K, 240 frames a second in, uh, version of DisplayPort 2.1. Um, and that's been chosen because this is the first monitor on the market that supports UHBR20. It's the only way we can really show it. It's very high bit rate. Very high bit rate, yeah. So uh, this is 20 gigabits per second. Uh, for, per lane or something? Yes. For, you have four lanes? And we have 80 gigs in total, that's correct, yeah. So this is going through the transceivers into our device. We're actually using a, an AMD GPU, a Radeon uh, processing unit in the PC here. That's the source for the DisplayPort 2.1. So we're basically passing that signal from the GPU through to, to the monitor. The so it's a pass-through UHBR20. Yes. Uh, so input and output. Yes, so it's coming into the card here. The chip is basically just passing it through and then putting it through here. So we're basically showcasing that we can do the I.O. And, and the performance that's required for the I.O. And what would be the advantage of doing that on FPGA? Uh, there's a bunch of processing that can happen in between? Well, so one of the challenges to do any video pipeline is to get things on and off the device. So this is really showing that we can support the latest standards and we can adapt very quickly to the latest standards. But just doing a pass-through doesn't make sense. Once you get it on the device, you can do whatever you like with it, video processing, like we have this demo here, for example. So th this isn't DisplayPort 2.1, this is uh, HDMI 2.1 in and out. Um, and here we've got one of our Versal uh, adaptive SLC devices. It's very powerful, we, we, we chose this board because we needed to have the I.O. capability, to be honest. And uh, Versal is also an FPGA? Yes. Yeah, we call them SLCs because they have ARM processors on there as well, but it's essentially an FPGA technology. Um, and this is showing 8K and 4K from different uh, sources being mapped together using fairly fundamental building blocks like video scalers, video mixers, those kind of things. And, and the whole demos that we have here are really gluing these building blocks together. So it could be AMD's connectivity and video processing, or it might be our partner's uh, AV over IP or even AI, as you'll see later. And soon enough, you might do HDMI 2.2. Potentially, we can support the speeds, uh, but the, the announcement only came out recently, so we're, we're trying to think what the demand is at ISE to see how much of a priority that needs to be. And again, like the, the use cases for people implementing this stuff is to, to get the video into a system and yes. out again. And Everybody needs HDMI or DisplayPort or Ethernet, PCI Express, so we, we build the infrastructure around whatever a customer wants to do. So we, we've been doing that for many years and I think we'll do that for many years more. Uh, the next demos are again AV over IP. Um, so we, we have a selection of AV over IP protocols and codecs. Um, we have JPEG XS here from our partners Intupix. Um, so they're showcasing the fact that they can do very uh, high quality with light compression. They've just introduced a TDC profile, which uh, is more of a, an interframe um, version of the JPEG XS codec that gives more compression. Uh, they've also got a master proxy encoder as well, so you can have a little thumbnail alongside the main image. So the, that is something that the market has been asking for recently. And again, all of that is running on our FPGA uh, and, and is also part of the IPMX standard. Uh, from our partners Ordinate, we have Dante. So you're probably familiar with Dante Audio. Um, Dante Audio is ubiquitous in the professional audio market. The last couple of years, they've also pushed into the video domain. So this is Dante AV Ultra. Um, and Dante has been running on FPGA for a long time. Uh, Dante AV Ultra is also an FPGA-based implementation. So we have customers that are implementing Dante AV Ultra using our devices from Ad Techno and Yuan for, for gateway products, for example. And this board here, this Symmetrix source? is using the Brooklyn 3 module, which is also AMD-based, and that's doing the audio DSP processing. And you can see it's all controlled through the same Dante controller um, that uh, people are familiar with from the audio domains. And uh, when you talk about JPEG, JPEG XS, I, I heard about the JPEG 2000, and some people talk about HEVC. Yes. What's the advantage of going the JPEG route? And JPEG does, it's is like MJPEG from 20 years, 30 years ago? Kind of, yeah. So JPEG is, let's say we call it a mezzanine or a lightweight codec, so it does very light compression. 
it's still quite high bandwidth so if you're doing 12 gigabit over a 10 gigabit net link or you want to do 4k over 1 gigabit ethernet you, you're doing enough compression to not sacrifice too much quality but reduce the bandwidth so that you can effectively replace things like SDI with Ethernet. Whereas HEVC and H.264 are a much higher compression codecs, so if you want to go down to multi-channel uh, versions over uh, 1 gigabit Ethernet, that's when HEVC would come in. Or if you want to do a wide area network transmission, the, the higher compression ratios come in for HEVC and H.264. All right. Okay. Um, so just uh, on the AV over IP front as well, we have NDI, uh, so we've had a long partnership with NDI. Uh, they have different versions of NDI, so uh, NDI HX3 is the latest um, uh, version which has a codec that can run in software and hardware. Um, and we also have NDI uh, high bandwidth, which has always been based on FPGAs. Um, and here we're showing different products that are using AMD technology. PTZ camera from Bowling, uh, the Killerview gateway product, Swix, uh, NDI native monitor, and Telescript have got a teleprompter uh, uh, monitor, which is also NDI native, as well as the Lumens PTZ camera. And each and every one of these has uh, an AMD product inside it, implementing NDI in some form. And the NDI is also to do with the uh, lossless kind of qualities and stuff like that? It's not lossless, it's good quality, it's good band a good use of bandwidth, so it's it's not like JPEG XS, it's more like H.264 uh, in terms of the codec capability. Um, but this is to use existing one gig networks, as the target is to use your existing IT infrastructure where possible. Not always, but where possible, you can plug in a few pieces of equipment and it won't take much bandwidth from your system. Does it have anything with the SDI connector? Uh, not on this demo, I'm not sure if they have, have any anything here. to do with that, right? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's pretty much IP native yeah. with HDMI uh, as the inputs and outputs generally. Um, we also have some AI demos on the booth. So this is uh, from our partner Macarena Labs. They're you, you showcasing here that you can do face detection and tracking. And, and a lot of people want to implement AI, but they're not quite sure how to do it. If you can do face tracking and object detection, you've kind of got the basis for a lot of things like PTZ camera movements, for uh, window framing and zooming and cropping and those kind of things. So we're just showcasing fundamentals here and you can see that we've detected two faces in the FPGA at the edge. There's no data center required to do AI. There's no network connection required to do AI. So they, this is in our Zinc Ultra Scale Plus running on CREA, which is our SOM. Um, and this is showcasing a, a basic implementation that these guys put together very quickly for the show. The CREA has an arm? The CREA has an arm in it, yes. So uh, And also FPGA? Yes, both together. So that's what we call an SOC. Um, and, and CREA here has got HDMI coming in, so we've plugged in a USB webcam. We've got HDMI out to the monitor, sorry it's not in, it's out. Uh, but this is uh, a, a fairly simple way to get into AI. And Macarena would give the expertise to kind of box this up and make it very easy to use. Um, last three demos that we have, we have lots of demos. So um, We also have high throughput JPEG 2000. Uh, so another mezzanine compression, one of these lightweight compression codecs. Um, again, running on the Zinc Ultra Scale Plus device, the same that's on the CREA. So this is a, an ARM-based FPGA. Um, and this is taking in a, a camera feed from up here. So a 4K camera live feed is going into the encoder. And then the JPEG 2000, the high throughput JPEG 2000 encoder is compressing that slightly. And then that's going into a PC so that we could software decoded. Um, and that shows very low latency, uh, like other mezzanine compression codecs, it's very low latency. Uh, the difference with JPEG 2000 is that the, there are no royalty uh, associated, it's kind of its USP, is that JPEG 2000 is an old standard, so you don't have to pay the royalty fees. And that. JPEG XS, is, how's the quality difference between XS and 2000? I, I can't comment on it, because there's a, always going to be an argument between the two, but they're, they're comparable. Uh, I think either would say that theirs is best. Um, each has their own uh, uh, kind of pros and cons. JPEG XS is widely used because it's become the standard way to use ST2110 and IPMX as part of that standard. Uh, but HTJ2K has got similar kind of characteristics, but it, crucially it's royalty free. Uh, the last couple of demos that we have, 
another AI demo here. So this is a really cool demo uh, showcasing Versal. So this is a Versal system or module. So our device is here. Uh, there's no network connectivity again. This is very uh, much at the edge, so it's very private. Um, you can do it very low latency and very quick. This is a, a Gen, AI, Gen AI accelerator that our partner Radarchip put together. Um, so Radarchip have uh, basically implemented a large language model from Meta. Um, and here we have kind of a chatbot approach. So we can talk to the chip and ask it questions based on the model that's been trained offline. Um, and the beauty is that you can effectively put this into your equipment and start talking to your equipment. Sounds mad, but if you have a, a, an equipment that is experiencing a failure, you don't necessarily need to go to the manual. You can ask it a question and it will give you what's going on in the system. Or it can start to predict things like failures or network, network bandwidth issues that it's predicting. It's a very fast predictor. I, I wonder if your uh, FPGAs can really accelerate this kind of functionality. It, is it possible that I could launch uh, like a 14 billion or uh, what do you call it, the 70 billion model or something and just make it work on the FPGA? It, it depends on whether it'll fit or not. So there's a certain size limitation in terms of the models that are capable. The, there's some that are in the data center, so you can throw a lot of hardware resource at it. This is enough for the edge. So they, this is still a very fast model, still a very capable model. You can ask it questions using the keyboard here, eventually speech to text, but It, Because some people are talking about getting big GPUs and the desktops to run this. Yeah. But I wonder if your FPJ can do a bunch of that work without yeah, that's needing to doing. get a huge GPU. That's exactly what it's doing here. That's exactly yeah. what it's doing here. So there's still use cases where you do want to have more capability and more acceleration. And you would probably use a big server or a big data center and, and offload it. But if you want to add this into your current product as an AV guy, then you can do it at the edge. You don't need all of that processing power. And if I want to run DeepSeek on it, can I ask you how to do that? Uh, you could. Yeah, Your partners you could. will be able to do that? Yeah, I mean, th th this is a model that has been chosen. There's no reason why it has to be that model, but that's what we chose for the demo of the show. All right. Okay. And then the final demo is display stream compression. So we have HDMI 2.1. This is IP from AMD. Uh, so we've had that since 2019, uh, but now we've worked with Alma Technologies, our partner, who have implemented display stream compression, which is uh, a requirement for much of the uh, standard requirements for connectivity. Uh, so there's an IP core, again, this is running in Versal. So we have HDMI 2.1 coming in. Alma's DSC is being applied to that, and then we're pushing 8K out to the screen here uh, on the back end through HDMI 2.1 again. And I see Ari is been on the demo on the oh, screen here. Yes. Just as an example, it could be a source of the the video. Yeah, I mean Ari are using FPGAs for sensor interfacing in their cameras and a bunch of other stuff. So they're, they're using this for high quality cinematography. Um, it shows that we have enough bandwidth to handle image processing uh, at cinema quality levels. Uh, but we also have bowling, as you saw a minute ago, came up. We can go down to PTZ camera implementations, uh, which are much lower cost, but it's a very different use case. Uh, so we have a range of parts that can be basically be matched to all kinds of different use cases. Uh, so as you say here, you do uh, intelligent AV, you can do all the way from the camera to the screen. Yes. And in between the network and everything, the yes. processing. Yeah, we're end-to-end we're -end in all the workflows. So if you walk around the show floor here and open the box, chances are it's got an AMD product inside it. And we, we say that we're at immersive, adaptive and intelligent. Immersive is about moving to 8K and to 4K fast frame rates. Uh, adaptive is because we're reprogrammable, so we can change the standards on the fly. And intelligence is the AI portion, so we can add smartness and differentiating features to your product. So I like a lot, if you can go closer to this wall, yep. I like a lot the ARM architecture. So how many of these logos have ARM? All of them, kind of? No, so we, we have, this isn't a complete portfolio either, but Artix is an FPGA, Kintex is FPGA, Korea is based on Zinc Ultra Scale Plus, so that's got ARM inside it. Uh, we also have Spartan, which is FPGA. Versal has got ARM inside. Vertex is FPGA, and Zinc has got ARM inside. And then we've also got Epic, Ryzen, and Radeon, which are more the CPU, GPU architectures, a different side of AMD. But sometimes some of these other uh, platforms might have a smaller ARM doing some kind of 
side processing somehow yes, the main that's true. thing yes yeah. so we, we I mean, obviously we promote the fact that you don't need a separate arm if you've got a separate arm you can probably integrate it into the FPGA and, and make it into an arm based SOC uh, but yeah there's use cases where that happens all the time